One thing to keep in mind regarding the creation of a cryptarhythm puzzle is that we cannot always create such puzzles by taking any arbitrary arithmetic exercise and substituting the digits in that exercise by letters because we may find when trying to reconstruct back the digits that there are multiple possible values for them. We want every cryptarhythm to have a unique solution, to have one solution. In this example, you can see that after replacing the digits 9, 3, 7, 1 and 0 by the letters A, B, C, D and E, we get the following encoded exercise. A, B plus C is D, E, E. But if we try to reconstruct back the digits from the letters, from the encoded version of the exercise, we'll find that there is no unique solution to this problem. One of the solutions to this problem is of course that A is 9, B is 3, C is 7, D is 1 and E is 0. But we could have had another valid solution to the same crypto uh, I don't want to call it a cryptarhythm because a cryptarhythm should have a unique solution. We could have had a different solution to the same puzzle. So instead of B being 3 and C being 7, it is possible that B could have been 4 and C could have been 6. 94 plus 6 would also have been 100. Just like 93 plus 7 is 100. We could in fact have had more solutions. 97 plus 3 would also have been 100. So we could have had B to be 7 and C to be 3 and still have the same exact encoding. So there are many different possible combinations of values for A, B, C, D and E which all result in a correct arithmetic operation and starting from which we could have got the same encoding, the same letter encoding. So we are going to define a cryptarhythm as a puzzle which necessarily has exactly one solution. It cannot have more than one solution. So this is not really a cryptarhythm or at least it's not the kind of cryptarhythm that we will be dealing with in this course where we want every puzzle to have one unique solution.